the processing loop begins by getting the color value of the next pixel in the pattern array. If the color of the pattern pixel is green, the code in the body of the if statement gets the color of the corresponding pixel in the destination array and then calls the method named darker to produce a darker version of the color of that pixel. The darker version of the color is then stored back into the pixel replacing the color that was previously there. Here are two questions for you. What is the name of the class in which the equals method that you see being called on the right of your screen defined? Also, what is the name of the class in which the darker method is defined. The class name color is a class in the standard Sun library. The equals method is defined with default behavior in the object class and is overridden to provide appropriate behavior for color objects in the color class. The darker method is defined in the color class. If you compare the two images on the right of your screen and ignore the ice skater and the ellipse, you will see that all of the pixels in the lower image are a darker version of the colors in the upper image. The color class also has a method named brighter which has the opposite effect from the method named darker. The brighter method can be used to brighten the color of a pixel. These two methods are very useful for making a pixel darker or brighter without having to know anything about the actual color of the pixel. The if statement that you see on the right of your screen has an else clause. That else clause is now showing on the right of your screen. The code in the else clause is executed if the color of the pixel from the pattern picture that was tested earlier is not green. Just to clear things up, let's make sure we understand that at this point only the images from the ellipse shown here and the snow scene shown here are being processed. The image of the skater shown here hasn't entered into the processing scheme so far. The code on the right in the else clause on the right of your screen is executed only if the pixel from the destination picture is at a location that matches one of the 
non-green or black pixels in the ellipse. However, the fact that the pixel is black is of no consequence. The only thing that matters is that it is not green. The objective of the code in the else clause is to modify the pixel color in the destination pixel at this location to give it a red tint as you see here. The code on the right of your screen begins by getting and saving the color of the pixel from the current location in the destination picture. Then it extracts and saves the red color value for that pixel. Then depending on the current value of the red color value it either multiplies that value by a factor of 1.25 or it sets the color value to the maximum allowable value of 255. Unless the red value was already at its maximum, this increases the intensity of the red color value in the pixel. To further emphasize the red color value in the pixel, the code on the right of your screen gets the green and blue color values and multiplies each of them by 0 0.8. In other words, the red color value, the intensity of the red color value is increased while the intensity of the green and blue color values are decreased. Finally, the original color in the pixel is replaced by a new color which is achieved by instantiating a new object of the class color using the new red, green, and blue color values. As you can see in the image on the right of your screen, this process causes the pixels in locations that match the ellipse to take on a red tint, but the texture of the image is not destroyed. It would be destroyed, for example, if the pixels had simply been replaced by pixels that all have the same color of pink. The code on the right of your screen signals the end of the processing loop and the end of the darken background method. Now the time has come to explain how to apply a red tint to the ice skater. The code that you see on the upper right of your screen is where we left off in the run method earlier. The statement below that calls a method named red tint passing a reference to the picture that contains the cropped image of the skater. The red tint method applies a red tint to the skater. The method named red tint assumes that the image being processed has a pure green background like that shown on the lower right of your screen. This method applies an algorithm very similar 
to the algorithm you saw before that was used to apply a red tint to the pixels in locations that match the uh, ellipse. Because of the similarity of the two methods, a detailed explanation of the method named red tint should not be needed at this point. If you were to display the picture referred to by Skater immediately after the method named red tint returns, you would see the image now showing on the bottom right of your screen. By comparing these two images, you can see the effect of applying the red tint process to the skater. Note that the process does not change the color of the green pixels. It only changes the color of the pixels belonging to the skater. Continuing now with the method named run, the code on the bottom right of your screen calls a method named green screen draw for the purpose of drawing the cropped and red tinted skater on the snow scene as shown here. The method name green screen draw copies all non-green pixels from a source image to a destination image at a specified location. This method is very similar to methods that I have explained in earlier lectures. Therefore, it should not be necessary for me to provide an explanation of this method in this lecture. When the green screen draw method returns, the code on the lower right of your screen calls the method named add message to display some text on the screen and then calls the explorer method to produce the output image that you see here. None of that should be new to you at this point in the course. Finally, the code on the bottom right of your, of your screen displays some information on the command line and then terminates returning control to the main method. Having nothing more to do, the main method shown on the bottom right of your screen terminates causing the program to terminate and return control to the operating system. In this lesson you learned how to darken, brighten, and tint the colors in a picture object. That concludes lecture number nine titled Darkening, Brightening, and Tinting the Colors in a Picture. You can learn more about these topics by visiting my personal website at www.dickbaldwin.com.